so in the previous lecture on oat to autumn uh, we have discussed the uh, explanation meaning of the first two stanzas line by line now we are moving to the third stanza let me read the third stanza where are the songs of spring a hey, where are they think not of them thou has thy music too while bard clouds bloom the soft dying day and touch the stubble plains with rosy hue then in a well full choir the small gnats the small gnats mount among the river swallows born aloft or sinking as the light wind leaves or dies and full grown lambs loud be bleat from hilly bone hedge thickets hedge crickets sing and now with treble soft the red breast weasels from a garden croft and gathering swallows twitter in the skies uh, so the third stanza starts with this line where are line number 23 where are the songs of spring a where are they so a is a sad uh, exclamation uh, just as you know alas oh these are the certain sad exclamations and the speaker is sad that spring isn't here uh, then line number 24 think not of them thou hast thy music too no need to miss spring autumn has her own music so autumn season has its own music uh, and he says and the poet says that don't think of uh, spring season because spring season is no more in other words the poet wants to say that everything is temporary in this world as spring passed and autumn uh, begins and in the same way uh, one day autumn will also uh, will not be there it will it will also we will also miss autumn season and there will be winter season next so there is temporariness in nature as well as there is you know uh, temporariness in the life of a human being so while bard clouds bloom bloom the soft dying day bard means here stip think of a bar chocolate like that so bloom means uh, you know blooming a flower uh you know <clears throat> then if we move to line number 26 <clears throat> and touch the uh, stubble plains with rosy hue uh, so hue is color here the plains which are uh, stubbly after the harvest get rosy that get pink so stubble means the short stalk after the grain or some other harvest has been cut then uh, then in a well full choir the small gnats moan gnat is a <clears throat> small biting fly uh, that likes to live along rivers the gnats buzz in a group uh, here choir is the word used for group the, they moan they are sad because of the dying day and also the end of summer season that is the end of uh, autumn season and uh, line 28 says uh, reads like this among the river swallows born aloft here swallow is a willow tree born means carried and uh, aloft means up so i told you earlier that there are many difficult words in this poem now in these lines which i am explaining you uh, the poet is telling us that uh one day uh, there will uh, you know uh, autumn season will also pass and uh, we have to face uh, winter season or sinking as the light wind leaves or dies here the gnat sink means fly down and next line is and full grown lambs loud bleat from hilly bone here bleat means the sound that sheep make full grown lambs half a year old sheep that is full grown lambs and 
uh, they are born in spring season in, in autumn season now they are full grown lambs hilly means with hills here uh, bone means a place a domain uh, then the next lines hedge cricket sing and now with treble soft the red breast weasels from a garden croft a hedge is like a fence like a wall made of plants or bushes the crickets are those bugs that make a lot of uh, sorry a lot of noise as they rub their wings together they don't sing but trip but never mind treble is a high shrill voice or sound the red breast is a bird in england that would be a robin a robin uh, robin bird you might be knowing that it has a red breast garden croft is a piece of land next to the house used as a vegetable garden then the next line and gathering swallows twitter in the skies a swallow is a migrating bird with a split tail a white breast and black feathers you can see them uh, in the europe in summer season and in africa in winter season they twitter means here makes soft noises the swallows are making ready to leave for their winter home home winter home so here as we uh, come to the end of the uh, poem come to the end of the ode we come to know that now uh, here autumn season also will pass we are coming uh, close to the end of autumn season as well so uh, we have to discuss uh, some other things of this poem why this poem is so famous that is the question so first uh, for the indian readers particularly we read english as we study english as second language uh, therefore we may not be able to appreciate the poem uh, uh, directly so therefore we have to first know the words so write down the words and try to understand the meaning of the words first uh, then if you read the poem uh, twice or three times five times uh, the meaning will become very clear to you uh, uh, the poem is very beautiful because of uh, the selection of the words as we go on reading the poem uh, we come to know that uh, you know the selection of the words and the sound uh, when we read it Uh, that is very excellent one uh, even if uh, you don't understand all the words you will uh, probably agree with me that the sound of the language is serious warm humming noble and happy only towards the end when we also come to the end of the day in the scenes that the poet is describing can we start to feel a little chill lambs that bleat is not a warm sound neither are the morning gnats that are belling in choir not a nice sound at all so the red breast that is robin singing in a bit better and swallows twittering is not a bad sound either but overall these are thin uh, bird sounds and somehow the poem sounds colder in the last stanza winter is coming those swallows will fly away Uh, these are migrating birds that don't stay in england uh, in the winter season they are flying back to africa until the spring season will uh, once again appear and uh, as far as the imagery is concerned uh, in the second the second thing which is very important about the poem is the imagery uh, the scene in the stanza is of golden light in the first stanza is of a golden light that shines through a mist on ripening fruit and nuts all the wonderful harvest that the season brings the fruit and gourds are swelling uh, and so are the bees honey combs everything looks sweet and mouth watering there is a rich bountifulness of food uh, in this season the scene is pastoral pastoral in the sense it is rural rural scene is there in the poem we are in the countryside and not in the city remember this uh, this is typical in romantic poetry 
in romantic poetry we find description of nature and rural area therefore the poem is rich in imagery and uh, we must know that i already told you that uh, john keats died at very early age at the age of 26 and uh, then also he managed to write very famous poem keats was very aware that he was writing in a tradition and he was ambitious enough to want to stand among the great poets of england uh, he used ideas from earlier english poets who were heavily influenced by the roman and greek classics on one hand but keats also experimented with uh, immediate impressions of reality and nature that would be recognizable to his readers and that caused them joy and trigger other emotions because they 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 would see well known images in their imagination so uh, autumn this poem o to autumn this poem is a great example of mixture of classical and romantic tradition so we should know what are the classical aspects uh, in this poem particularly the structure of the poem is uh, classical it is an ode uh, ode is a traditional verse uh, form used by the romans and greeks the meter is iambic pentameter which is the same that shakespeare has used in many of his plays uh, the other old fashioned thing is that autumn is personified as a kind of goddess who is in the in the charge of all the uh, processes that go on during the season uh, we can specially understand this when uh, we read stanza 2 uh they their autumn has several jobs she is watching the uh, bringing in and threshing uh, of the grain she harvests poppies with a hook she gleans uh, potatoes or some other vegetables from the field uh, and uh, finally she keeps an eye on the wine making and then uh, in the third stanza uh, the goddess autumn is gone she is not there uh, maybe this because uh, in the third stanza uh, 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 we feel somewhat lonely and empty because the autumn season is coming to an end uh, as far as the romantic aspect of the poem is concerned the imagery from the english countryside that is countryside of united kingdom makes this poem romantic including a cottage with a thatched roof fields with sheep and brook brook that is small river or stream you can't get uh, sorry we can't get any more uh, english than this so this is a particular poem about the rural area of england <clears throat> then uh, 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 then what do we find Uh, uh there are uh, uh, names of certain plants animals all this is there and uh, uh, autumn is seen as goddess so this is all uh, mixed together in such a combination and uh, therefore the poem becomes uh, very unique uh, especially due to the uh, classical element due to the romantic element that is a description of rural area and due to uh, you know uh, certain aspects related to human life uh, uh, you know uh, in human life as well we find uh, life is temporary in the same way in nature as well we find temporariness there is uh, the poet uh, also tells that there is cycle in nature you know uh, life and death death and life like that autumn season will not be uh, any more uh, after some time and then there will be winter season and after the winter season once again there will be spring season and after the spring season there is once again autumn season so uh, this life circle is there uh, and when if we go on reading uh, the poem again and again definitely it makes lots of uh, uh, lots of meaning different meanings will come out so this is one of the poems uh, which is very famous in english literature uh, i think i should stop here
uh, I end my lecture. Thank you very much for listening.